Today, we are taking a look at Frankie's Free Range Meat versus Butcher Box. And honestly, I'm a little bit nervous because what I did was have my friend order Butcher Box and then order the exact same stuff from Frankie's Free Range Meat. So I haven't had a look in either of these boxes. Now, this arrived today. This is what was packed up uh, today at Frankie's Free Range Meat as well. So this is anticipating what you would receive at your doorstep. And I believe Butcher Box did send a free turkey. Uh, so we can definitely take a look at that and talk about the difference between that and heritage breed stuff. You know, off the bat, they do have branding on their box, but you know, I have a feeling if we put branding on our box on Frankie's Free Range Meat, they would actually intentionally destroy our packages. So we don't have the luxury of that. Now this is how Butcher Box puts the dry ice. We usually, we just put the dry ice in a, a bag like this. Oh, they also do a bag. So they have some dry ice in here and they have more dry ice down there. This is the free turkey. This is a little thought out over here. It, it's, it's marked for Butcher Box. All natural, all vegetable diet, no preservatives, raised without antibiotics, complete traceability farm. This is basically your conventional, your conventional turkey, your bird. Uh, we'll thaw this out and take a look at the meat when it's thawed out. This is some type of packaging material. So the meat, the meat's frozen, but it's a little soft. So, you know, it's mostly frozen, but it's definitely thawed out a little bit. They could have put some more dry ice in here. So here they have a whole chicken. They have some ground beef. Okay, so this actually, this actually doesn't look that good. The, the seal on the ground beef is broken. It's, it's soft, it's a little thought out. It looks like this is oxidized a little bit. This one looks a little better, but you know, from a ground beef perspective, it doesn't look that good. It's kind of light in color. That indicates oxidation. This is top sirloin cap, which is supposed to be picanha. It's pretty lean. It looks oxidized. You know, we'll take a closer look at this, but it's oxidized already, that's not good. Two ribeye steaks. Seal's broken on this one. Seal's not broken on this one. So far we have, you know, out of the, you know, four things we looked at, half the seals are broken. This is a pork tenderloin. Seal looks intact, but this is obviously, you know, regular pink conventional pork, despite the misleading marketing. And we got some strip steaks. Seal's broken again. You know, we're assuming they didn't package meat that had a broken seal. We're assuming the seal broke throughout the shipping process. You know, what they can do is they can put more packing material, more empty material in here to, uh, to prevent it from knocking around. Envelope that is completely soaked. Recipes and how to defrost the meat and cook from frozen. So just some cooking instructions here. Overall, could be better, could be worse. Now, Frankie's free range meat. I don't think they put ice in this because, you know, I literally just went to pick it up today, but maybe he had some ice to put in here. Now, this is probably why Butcher Box thought out because I don't know what type of insulated lining this is, but this is, this is crap for, oh, that's probably breathing in some crap too, but th this is not going to keep the cool in that well. Um, it's not, it's not insulated on top. I don't know how the hell they, uh. It's not really insulated that well, it has gaps. On Frankie's Free Range Meat, we ship in the styrofoam. You get a little bit of uh, you know, thank you for purchasing. If your meat arrives like this, this is how to store it. Okay, so he did put some ice in here. So uh, this is how the dry ice comes, depending on uh, what your order size is. There will be more, there will be less. And all of the meat, we wrap it in paper just to, to try to prevent it in case, you know, it not, gets knocked around, the seal doesn't break, it's packing material, as well as if, it, if the seal does break, it does leak, it, it doesn't leak that badly because it's wrapped in paper. Uh, so, oh, he put in a whole picanha, whereas, so this is, this is the sirloin cap from grass-fed top sirloin cap grass-fed top sirloin cap. Obviously, this is much bigger. Let me see if he puts something else in here that's closer to that. 
So here we have ribeye steak. That looks really good actually, especially compared to that. Oh, but let, let's put all this stuff on the counter and then we'll compare it side by side. Uh, this is our chicken. And I'm already noticing, you know, when comparing the packaging side by side, you know, these are already sealed. It's a lot tighter. Another ribeye steak. This is our pork tenderloin. Obviously, huge color difference already. This is a strip steak. Okay, this is our sirloin cap, so. He did, he did put a smaller one in here. Here's another strip steak. This is our 8515 ground beef. And this is another one of our ground beef. You know, if I'm trying to be objective from the consumer perspective of the packaging material and the experience opening the box, to me it doesn't make any difference as long as there's enough ice in there and everything is wrapped neatly. Uh, so to me, both of these were okay. Although again, you know, ButcherBox could have put a bit more dry ice in their package. You know, it's completely melted. And uh, you know, if, if this box was delayed one day, then they would have had a major issue. All of the meat would have been completely thawed out. Both of these orders cost approximately the same amount of money. Butcher box was 149. Frankie's free range meat is 156. On butcher box, you get a free turkey. On Frankie's free range meat, you get steaks that are almost double the size. So you know, butcher box sent us 10 ounce strip and ribeye. On Frankie's free range meat, ours are over one pound you know, 16, 17 ounces. And in addition, we usually offer something free with your order every week. This week it was lamb brains, which are $15 value. Sometimes we offer ground beef. So there is a promotion here uh, that does make up for the turkey and you get more bang for your buck. You know, you're paying less per pound of meat from Frankie's free range meat and it's legitimately high quality, but I don't need to say that. Let's let the meat speak for itself. The main focus in our video last week was talking about the quality of the pork and the chicken on ButcherBox. And you know, if we look here, the pasture-raised chicken from Frankie's Free Range Meat, you know, it's a tiny bit smaller. It indicates it's an heirloom quality. Uh, you could tell, you know, the coloring is slightly darker. And this is obviously much, much lighter coloring. You know, you don't have the yellow carotenoids from the natural pasture-raised diet. And we could let this stuff thaw out too, and then we'll open it up later and take a better look at it. Uh, the ground beef, you know, the butcher box is a bit lighter in color, a bit more red. And again, you know, this one's open, this one's kind of oxidized. You know, if you look at the ground beef from Frankie's range meat, it's darker, indicates a higher mineral content in the beef, and it just packaged a little nicer too. It's, it's, it's a tighter package. Uh, for the sirloin cap, there is a significant difference here. You know, I don't know what type of grass-fed cow they got this sirloin cap off of, but you know, this is what the meat should look like. You have the nice beige to yellow fat. You have deep red, almost purple flesh, some nice marbling in there. This is, you know, this looks like a almost conventional grain-fed sirloin cap and the seal's broken and there's not much marbling and there's not that great of a fat cap. You know, even on Frankie's free range meat, when the meat isn't that marbled, the picanha always has a fat cap on it. I think the most drastic thing we might see today is the difference in Iberico pork versus conventional pork. Um, you know, our pork is deep red, it's like as dark as beef, and their pork is, you know, pink, very light in color. You know, they're claiming, oh, you know, it's an all vegetarian feed, no antibiotics, da, da, da. This is 100% pasture-raised pork, Iberico, this is what your pork should look like if it's high quality. Just like that's what your chicken should look like if it's high quality. You could tell people all you want that you're selling high quality meat, but when you compare it to actual high quality meat, it's not. You know, look at this, look at this strip loin. Look at these strip loins compared to theirs. The meat's much darker in color. The fat is yellow beige. You know, I didn't talk about ButcherBox's beef 
last week, but I'm, I'm comfortable saying that I've never seen grass-fed beef that looks like this. You know, the, the flesh is, is light in color. You know, the, the fat, it's, it's kind of white. I don't know what's going on here. I'm not saying anything for certain. What I know is this is the grass-fed beef we sell on Frankie's Free Range Meat, and that's the grass-fed beef butcher box sells. They're both grass-fed. Which one do you want? I think the ribeye steaks are an embarrassment to butcher box, to be honest. Uh, you know, this is what you get on Frankie's Free Range Meat, and this, this isn't even a prime ribeye. You know, for what ButcherBox charges for their steaks, you can buy prime ribeyes on Frankie's Range Meat, and they have even more marbling than this. Uh, this is, I mean, this is pathetic. Look, again, the same thing. This is lighter in color. It's not cut that nice. Uh, so let's thaw everything out. Let's let it sit. We'll cut everything open and take a look at it outside of the packaging. Now that everything is thawed out, I noticed something more substantial than a color difference, and that is the smell of the meat. Some of these butcher box steaks have a very minerally gamey smell. Now, some of their steaks don't, but for some reason, most of the butcher box meat, it has this mineral gaminess that happens when the animal isn't getting enough nutrition in the grass. You know, when I smell, yeah, it's consistent across their meat. And I'll tell you right now, these steaks are going to be no good. Uh, the Frankie's Free Range meat, yeah, it doesn't have that minerally smell. It actually doesn't have much of a smell at all, which also means the meat is much fresher. It's not aged as much. Let's see if the ground beef has that difference too. Yeah, I smell a little bit on their ground beef too. Not on our ground beef. That's weird. I didn't really expect that. Uh, I guess I could smell the difference between the chicken as well. You know, now of course we could cook this up and taste this, but... Usually smell is a, a good indicator of quality as well. Yeah, our, our chicken's a bit fresher, so you know their, their chicken smells like a regular chicken does, and our chicken doesn't actually have a smell to it. Uh, so, so one thing people might not know is when meat is really, really fresh, like slaughtered recently, it, it doesn't really start developing its smell, its flavor until two or three weeks after. That's why most meat is aged you know, three, four weeks before it hits supermarket shelves. So when the chicken's thawed out, you know, there's a substantial, substantial difference. You, know, you could see the darker color of the meat. You could see the carotenoids in the fat and skin. I mean, the sheer size of the conventional bird, which is what Butcher Box is probably selling versus what we have, uh, it is a big, big, big difference. And uh, we hope to sell even higher quality chicken on Frankie's Free Range Meat in the future. And despite being only in business for a year and a half, we're already knocking Butcher Box out of the water on the quality front. You know, what has me really excited is that future of even higher quality meats. And it is a bit disappointing when you have a company worth, you know, several hundred million. Uh, we could kind of cut the meat open and just take a quick look, see if there's a big difference in the color of the breast. So the conventional breast is, you know, regular chicken colored. This breast meat's a little darker. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's definitely darker. The conventional meat has a bit of a pink hue to it, and the outside of it is, is a much lighter. And our bird has just darker flesh all around. That's the main indicator, and then you can also look at the size and say, all right, this is clearly you know, a more heritage breed bird that is a naturally attainable size. Uh, so now that the ground beef is thought out, there's less of a discrepancy but ours is still slightly darker. What's really gonna tell is, is the inside. You know, Butcher Box on the left versus us on the right. You know, our, our ground beef is slightly darker. I'm not gonna nitpick and say there's an incredible difference here. Uh, you know, we definitely have some ground beef like the local ground beef and the Wagyu on Frankie's range meat that might've been more of a stark contrast. Yeah, all I really have to say about the ground beef for them is, is theirs has that slightly minerally gamey smell and this is a bit fresher as well. I mean, this sirloin cap is an embarrassment to butcher box. I don't know, you know, what the hell they're doing selling this. You know, this is, you know, which one do you want? You know, this is, this is a, a substantial difference. The marbling, the color of the meat, the freshness, this is very oxidized already. It smells super gamey and horrible. And I bet you this fat tastes like butterscotch right here. This is a substantial difference in quality and what you're getting. So the pork, you know, we showed earlier, you know, there's a substantial color difference in, you know, conventional pork versus actually pasture-raised pork. And although pork isn't as bright as chicken, 
you know, it's supposed to be really, really deep red. That has like a, not much of a smell to it at all. This smells like acorns. This smells like the forest. This smells really, really delicious that I want to take a bite out of it, actually. I think if you bought this butcher box pork and then, you know, bought the Iberico pork from Frankie's Range Meat or any actually pasture-raised pork, oh my God, world of a difference. This is probably the most substantial taste difference you will see in a product ever. So the strip steak, that really off minerally smell again, that's throwing me off a bit. Uh, from a comparison perspective of something more reasonable, actually, you know, the meat is fairly similar in color. The outside on both is a little bit lighter. Um, on ours, you could tell the fat is softer, more beigey yellow tint to it, grass fed. Yeah, these smell pretty similar. I, you know, I would say if you cook these steaks side by side, you might enjoy this one a little bit more. But overall, on Butcher Box's end, this is not the worst piece of meat in their box by any means. Can't say the same about the other stuff. So for the ribeye, we have the same disgusting minerally smell. I am not, I'm going to have Adam eat this beef. I'll let you guys know how it was because I'm, <laughs> I'm not a fan. Probably have to marinate it. But, but the other ribeye that they sent, this one doesn't have that minerally smell. You could tell it's a little bit more marbled and that the animal was getting some feed, but let's not compare these steaks. This is ridiculous. You know, this isn't even our prime steak, you know? I mean, it's not a fair comparison. The meat is darker, there's more marbling, it's cut nicer. You know, which one do you want? You're paying the same amount of money for both of these steaks. It's, it's absolutely crazy, and this is probably the reason that we're not making half as much money as ButcherBox because ButcherBox is selling you this low quality meat at the same price we're selling you this meat. Overall, I'm a little bit disappointed, but I kind of expected this because I have ordered from ButcherBox in the past and not once have I ever gotten a package that hasn't had a seal broken. Uh, same thing with the quality of the meat, I think. Butcher Box has had fairly consistently low quality meat throughout their entire business operations. I wasn't anticipating talking that much crap about the beef, but that's what actually happened. You know, as I said in my video last week, I mostly focused on the low quality chicken and the low quality pork because, you know, from a marketing perspective, if Butcher Box says they sell grass fed beef and I say I sell grass fed beef, I just have to let the product speak for itself and put that in front of you and say, hey, you know, Butcher Box is selling this, we're selling this, it's the same price. Which do you think was from a more properly raised animal? Which cut of meat do you think is going to taste better? What really threw me for a loop and what I didn't expect was the meat to have that really off, minerally gamey smell. Half of this beef wouldn't get past the quality control on Frankie's Three Range Meat. You know, if we were cutting something up, and it smelled like that, you know, we wouldn't send it to a customer. And we do occasionally get meat that smells like that from animals. But again, you know, we don't sell it to our customers and we certainly don't send a box full of half of it to our customers. You know, ButcherBox could sell higher quality meat, but we know that's never gonna happen. And with their corporate structure, they would certainly have to raise their prices. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable saying this is probably uh, the competitors playing field and that, you know, Frankie's Free Range Meat really is above what everyone else is doing, at least in, you know, the online butcher shop space. And again, as we expand, as we grow, as we control more of the operation ourselves, the quality is only going to improve. You know, so we're already beating out the big guys, you know, in another year or so, it's going to be night and day comparison. You won't ever want to order from anywhere else. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, as I've illustrated several times in this video, I'm really excited and looking forward to the future of Frankie's Free Range Meat, uh, considering how far we've come in just a year and a half. Uh, if you guys have been ordering from ButcherBox uh, and you want to order from Frankie's Free Range Meat, uh, just you know, send me an email that you placed an order and I'll give you an extra like few percent discount. Maybe I'll even do 5%. Uh, on, on some of your orders if you guys want to switch over. If you guys want to learn more about our products, definitely check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com. Thanks for joining me, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video.